this is Shelby with Quest and welcome to Quest Experience Week. Today is PeopleSoft Day and our session today is Chatbots, Digital Assistance and the Future. And we have a whole panel of speakers from one of our sponsors today, Sierra Cedar, to be with us. So a few housekeeping notes to go over before we get started. All attendee lines are in mute and will stay in mute throughout this session. So if you do have any questions, please put those into the question drop down box on your GoToWebinar panel and we'll answer those questions at the end of the session. This session is being recorded and it will be uploaded to the Quest content library and all attendees will receive an email notification when that is available. So at this time, I'm gonna pass it over to Chris who will get things started for us. Great, thanks Shelby. Good afternoon everyone and welcome. Uh, thank you all for joining this presentation with me, my colleagues, and Sierra Cedar. My name is Chris Cameron and I'll be one of your presenters this afternoon. A uh, little background on me, I've been with Sierra Cedar for 13 years and I've worked with Oracle products in the higher ed space uh, about 18 years now. Uh, one of my focal points is on cloud technologies such as digital systems and how we can help our clients leverage tech to meet their business needs. For logistics, we have about 20 minutes allotted for questions at the end of the presentation. Uh, and now we will do some quick introductions. Alex? And you might be on mute, Alex. Yes, thank you, Chris, for that. Hi, my name is Alex Lozano. I'm a senior consultant at Sierra Cedar. I've been uh, on the user experience design side for about 13 years now, and I work across higher ed, commercial, and public sector. Um, my specialty is designing uh, self-service front ends for uh, HCM, CRM, uh, and student. So I'm gonna now pass it on to Babu for his introduction. Hi, thanks everyone for joining the call. Uh, my name is Babu Chunduru and I'm senior consultant, uh, consultant at uh, Sierra Cedar and I have been around 15 years of experience on in higher ed and are on various vertical products. Uh, I really love exploring emerging technologies. I'm glad to be part of this presentation. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nancy Booker. I started life as a HCM PeopleSoft end user at the University of Maryland for many years and 12 years ago made the segue to consulting with Sierra Cedar and I'm a member of the organization change management team. Back to you, Chris. Excellent. Thanks, team. All right. The topics for our discussion this afternoon will be covering our objectives, reviewing definitions and benefits, discussing where digital assistants are used today, demonstrating one of the digital assistants that we prototyped, uh, covering, an in, covering an overview on how to build, manage, and optimize a digital assistant, discussing steps we would recommend on your digital assistant journey, and then opening up to the rest of the session uh, time for questions. So our objective, so we're hoping that by the time we're done with this presentation today, you'll have a high level understanding on what a digital assistant is, how they can be leveraged and why, how to get started and building out your digital assistant roadmap. Definitions. First, let's discuss the difference between a digital assistant and a chatbot. The terms are sometimes used synonymously, but they are indeed quite different. Out of the two, chatbots are the least sophisticated when it comes to the task they're programmed to perform. They're not as intelligent as DAs and they lose the context of a conversation. However, they're very good at simple Q&A. Digital assistants, on the other hand, are capable of carrying out more complex ranges of functions, assisting with completing business tasks and integrating and sourcing data from different systems. Digital assistants are much better at remembering context and understanding the meaning of a user and not just the language they're using. For today's discussion, we are gonna be focused on digital assistants. So why ODA? Some of the reasons are because ODA features AI with NLP, we have the ability to integrate APIs to connect ODA with ERP and SaaS applications, which is incredibly powerful. Uh, ODA provides a Q&A framework for FAQs that can be exposed through chat, voice, mobile applications, and websites. They integrate with instant apps to provide forms to capture information, which you'll see an example later in the demo. And ODA provides a robust built-in analytics called Insights. There's a high degree of value that can be achieved using this technology. At a high level, we can provide our customers and users consistent 24 by seven support without waiting lines or being on hold. 
For the investment, because the ODA cloud service can integrate with so many different platforms, there's an immense reuse of the technology where we invest in the initial configuration in the cloud service, and then we deploy it in a myriad of different avenues, such as ERP and SaaS applications, other websites, mobile applications, et cetera. Digital assistants are here to stay. Based on projections, by 2020, 80% of organizations will use some form of digital assistant. And by 2025, all applications will have some form of artificial intelligence baked in. And now I'll pass it off to my colleague, Nancy, for digital assistance in common use today. Thanks, Chris. When you take a look at this uh, list of logos, I'm sure you'll see some that you recognize. Many have the Q&A ability that Chris mentioned, where they're just bringing you data from the system, kind of presenting it in a more user-friendly way. Maybe it's health details, or where's my driver, if you're using the Lyft app. But some are becoming predictive, such as, you searched for this, are you ready to transact on it? Uh, in fact, uh, that allusion is to really a solid practice in designing your ODA and um, configuring it for your use, which is, you know, your assistant should always ask first before it executes a transaction. So when we look at the demo, you may see that uh, it might feel at times like, yeah, I said I want to update my address. But as it's a good practice for the digital assistant to ask that second time to make sure that uh, the transaction executed is correct. Within PeopleSoft, there are both the task-oriented and the predictive types of digital assistance available. There are a lot of uses here, as you can see, some use cases. Some are HCM-based. Uh, there's some that are financial-based. Uh, something like open enrollment, I think, is a great application because you have individuals who rarely interact with the system. So by making that initial impression very simple and returning as much of the data to the user without a lot of menu-driven navigation, you're going to have a more successful experience. There are also some um, campus or higher ed related uh, practical use cases like looking at schedules, looking at grades. Certainly, those folks who are in the higher ed environment tend to be more geared to leveraging technology in the easiest possible way. So we're going to take a moment now to take a look at something, demonstrate something that we have built. You can see here I've got a iPad experience queued up. And I think if you just put yourself in that mindset, you know, that's when you least want to be sitting trying to type something out on a keyboard or managing a lot of uh, navigation steps. So you'll see that we built it with a lot of yes or no questions. Uh, so the little chat bubble is at the bottom. You open it, and we're just going to expand that a little bit larger than life so you can follow along. There's a nice welcome message. You see here we have it defaulting to some academic choices, but I really like this side-to-side -side navigation that's now available, personal details. There's some financial aid off to the side. We're going to choose updating the address, choose which address that is on file to update. And the first thing that it does is that Q&A type of experience where it brings you back, this is the address we have for you. Okay, yes, I do want to update it. Please open the update address screen. Now it defaults into the traditional end user uh, experience, so I would technically be typing this in, although not nearly that fast. And then I'll click the submit. There's the ability for the student or the user to go and double check uh, that it was done. The bot can return and ask anything else you need. No, nothing else needed today. You can incorporate a nice sign off message. And then it's important to remember that the user should sign off themselves. And then, you know, that quickly, the interaction is completed. So I'm sure you can think of a number of opportunities for either the casual user or very quick interactions where it's uh, almost a foolproof guided experience. So what is PeopleSoft delivering where digital assistants are concerned? Um, there was an absence management um, opportunity delivered in um, image 31. 
there are a number that are on the roadmap here. And I like to, in particular, take note of the one that is related to onboarding. When you think about your new employees starting, you know, think of how nice it is. They may not be familiar with PeopleSoft at all. They may be overwhelmed with multiple other uh, systems they have to learn. So how nice to make that a very fluid and easy interaction for them and set the stage for them to continue to use digital assistance going forward. The link that you see there um, does take you to um, a PeopleSoft page that is about digital assistance. And it is important to say that these are separate products um, from an Oracle perspective. So you would want to engage with your Oracle representative for more information on implementing them. Now I'm going to take it back to Chris for building, Great. managing, and optimizing. Excellent. Thanks, Nancy. Has anyone ever called a support line and gotten stuck in that never-ending prompt loop? You know, the one where you're mashing the zero button trying to speak to a real person or operator to get what you need handled? Well, that is the exact opposite experience that we want when designing our digital experience and we, when we keep our goals in mind. The demo that Nancy had just shown was an Oracle Digital Assistant in the cloud that we configured, developed, and then deployed in PeopleSoft Campus Solutions. We had pulled together some of our top talent with a focus around the following goals. We wanted to provide a rich user experience for users with the perception that they're speaking with a real person, meanwhile providing that 24 by 7 service availability. We wanted to build expertise within our design and development team, and we wanted to gain organizational buy-in and understanding that the technology can be leveraged to satisfy many, many different requirements. We'll now be discussing the process we went through with our digital assistant journey with additions on how we believe the technology can be successful in any organization. And with that, I'll hand it off to my colleague, Alex. All right, thanks, Chris. So as we start stepping into the space of a governance framework, we'll just define at a high level that a governance framework provides structure for an organization to ensure that its IT investments and business objectives meet. It allows the organization to think and act in a strategic manner. And SEI has outlined four top level areas of consideration for a DA deployment. The service strategy quadrant determines the scope of the DA service offering. Through an internal assessment, service providers gain insight into their strengths, weaknesses, and they're able to identify areas of opportunity. Customers may ask, what competitive advantage may be gained by deploying a DA? What lines of business may benefit? or do we have the necessary in-house expertise for a successful deployment? Organizations further define customer demographics, needs, and their service goals. So the execution plan then transitions the organization from the what and the why to the who, the how, and the when by identifying key management resources, developing high-level communications and change management plans, project timelines, and a deployment strategy. Through this effort, our customers lay down the foundation for a successful implementation and mitigate risks. In the service portfolio quadrant, it incorporates the new DA service offering into the service portfolio so it can be managed through its life cycle. The DA landscape is projected to change quickly over time as the technology evolves and matures. So the DA service should be periodically reviewed for continued value add and relevance. As we move on to the third quadrant for customer relationship and demand management, in this area, we're ensuring that resources are dedicated to engaging with your customer base to understand, anticipate, and influence customer demand for DA services. Otherwise, an organization risks diluting its service offering by producing too little or too much of what is required. They can also experience having issues with DA quality and delivery, and this can lead to general cu customer dissatisfaction. Finally, metrics assist the organization in understanding if it's meeting its goals. Customers should consider leveraging developer and operational analytics for real-time insights into system performance. A data scientist resource may assist in supercharging internal analysis and improve the DA service offering. Many of you may be wondering how to go about selecting your first DA. This is a very important question to spend some brain power on. We suggest reviewing processes that are done often and by many. For example, FAQs along with expenses and time reports are a few that come to mind. In addition, processes with high impact should also be considered like viewing grades or 
maybe making a payment on a student account. And as a general rule, processes should be mature, well-defined, and simple for your first DA deployment. When launching into your design phase of your DA, we have some considerations that we'd like to share. We first started off with designing a persona for our DA. The persona can be thought of as the DA's personality. If well designed, the DA persona assists in forming a stronger connection between the DA and the user. One of the first persona design decisions is to determine if the DA will be a representative of an individual person or of an organizational brand. The next step is to determine which archetype will provide the quote unquote color to our DA's personality. The 12 archetypes listed in the image on the right hand is the work of Carl Jung, a famous psychologist who worked in the early 1900s. Jung spent his time studying the symbols and myths of many different cultures and found similarities that represent human behavioral patterns and the collective human unconscious. These archetypes have been widely used in marketing and are also known as the 12 brand archetypes. So for example, the archetype of the creator is seen across the marketing campaigns for Apple, Lego, and Adobe. The DA persona based on an archetype comes through as the DA interacts with the user through its greetings, goodbyes, and general error handling. Creative writers, graphic designers, and representatives from the organization's communications and marketing teams are all key participants in this process. Great, thanks, Alex. Now I'm going to pass this on to Chris. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> when we started to actually configure and deploy the digital assistant, we started small, and you'll probably hear us say that quite a bit. Uh, we started with a, a single task, or in our case, a single skill, which is what we use to group a logical set of tasks and conversation flows together. We wanted to do a proof of concept where the digital assistant interacts with the user, fetches the user's data from PeopleSoft, and then displays that data to the user. For initial use case, we chose a common example of displaying the user's address. This small, simple use case got us started configuring the Oracle Digital Assistant in the cloud. The configuration in the cloud entails creating that skill with intents, flows, and custom components. Because digital assistants weren't yet integrated with PeopleSoft Campus Solutions, we also needed to configure and deploy the Java SDK that Oracle delivers and initialize the Java inside of Campus Solutions. However, the framework is now delivered with PeopleSoft applications, so the Java SDK that we use could instead be an example of how you'd integrate ODA with other applications. So if we were to do this over again, we would be using the, the baked in functionality from the, the bots delivered with the application release. Configuration aside, there was some development that also needed to take place. We needed to build the PeopleSoft APIs to handle retrieving the user's data, and we needed to build the JavaScript leveraging Node.js for custom component in the ODA and to interact with the PeopleSoft APIs. Then after we had this initial use case developed and tested, we decided to take it one step further and make it a little bit more complicated. We then wanted to update that address in PeopleSoft, which is the example we saw earlier. This update address addition allowed us to configure additional intents and to develop the web form or instant app to capture the user's new address information. We also created another custom component, which was needed to post the data back to PeopleSoft. So now we have an intent for view address and we have an intent for update address. This is just an example of how we started small and how we started sm simple. And then we built upon the skills that we had configured and added more and more functionality as we went on and as we, we branched out. In the example that we saw earlier, there was some additional items around financial aid and um, students' academics, et cetera. But because we had that core framework there, um, it literally was a fraction of the time to build each of the new pieces of functionality because we were just building on the same conversation flows. We had our core um, custom components built with the JavaScript already ready, um, the, the API framework and packages inside of PeopleSoft. So it's, there's, there's a lot that can be built quickly once you get up that initial learning curve. And that's why we keep recommending start simple and start small. We, we think it'll get your team there fastest. Now, on to testing and lifecycle management, which is critical for any software development lifecycle. So primarily, we test early and we test often, and unit testing is the key. We heavily use the testing tools built into the ODA cloud. The tools validated our conversation flow configuration. 
They showed conversation matches and flow selections, and they helped fine tune the digital assistant configurations. And as you're building and as you're doing that unit test, you, you'll notice um, when the, the user is asking a question or a response is happening, fine tuning that flow on if you're you're jumping around to different skills like if the if it we're taking a student example and they're updating their address and then they they pop in a question to ask about a grade which is a completely different kind of concept the the assistant is smart enough where it understands that they want a different sort of activity can take them to that different activity and then send them back and transition back to where they were before too so it's it's pretty powerful and the the testing and tools are going to really help you tune that functionality on as it's transitioning from skill to skill. So then we used other testing techniques as well, such as displaying variables in the conversation flow along with inside the custom components. Our goal during the testing was to resolve issues or bugs early and at that low level. Once you start adding more and more skills and, and the digital assistant is getting more complicated, making sure that each of your different skills are unit tested will really save you quite a bit of time later than trying to handle it all as one big lump when you have this, this pretty um, you know, robust digital assistant that you're rolling out. Um, once we have the digital assistant tested, we then need to monitor and refine the skills and flows. So within ODA, they're built in analytics on conversations that users have with the digital assistants uh, with their inputs that aren't recognized, et cetera. So it's, it's incredibly powerful when you can go into the analytics area and review the different conversation paths that a user was having with your DA and see where it was thrown that curveball, where it didn't quite understand how to react. And that's where it gives you an opportunity to then go in and update. So there's a lot of information that can be reviewed to improve the digital assistant in those analytics. Just because your digital assistant is developed and working does not by any means mean it is done. We always need to be reviewing and optimizing. Now, during our digital assistant journey, we had several challenges and lessons learned. Now that we understand the basics on what a digital assistant design, config, and development looks like, let's talk about some of the challenges and lessons learned that our team experienced while working on our proof of concepts. Firstly, there were learning curves around different technologies that are utilized. For instance, YAML or a version of it for the skill conversation flows, JavaScript with Node.js for the custom component creation to, for the gets and posts data to, ex, to the external applications. And then we have the Oracle Digital Assistant detail configs, the fine tuning of the DA settings were among one of the primary areas where we needed to learn and grow. Next, we need to understand how to troubleshoot. Understanding the different built-in tools, like the conversation flow validations, the component logger, et cetera, leveraging them. The tools that we can leverage helped us perform much of the troubleshooting that we needed, and it made the whole process much easier. And then there's a plethora of information referenced in the links below. There are delivered Oracle documents, blogs, et cetera, in addition to um, a very active uh, customer forum. We've referenced the link back again as well for the, um, the PeopleSoft digital assistant slash chatbot page, which is a good reference if you want to see what's currently out, um, AKA the, the absence bot, um, and also what versions and requirements you have on people tools. I believe it's 8.5.7.0.7, and then um, if there are PUM releases that you need as well for the application side. And finally, we want to start small and start simple. Don't try to solve all the world's problems in the first use case. Pick something that is small and simple and that will resonate with the team as you build your skills and organizational buy-in. And now for our suggested next steps and roadmap and path forward. So for your next steps or to start your ODA journey, we'd recommend identifying that first use case. Again, keeping it simple and keeping it small. Provision your Oracle Digital Assistant in the cloud, which is a quick task even if you don't have an Oracle Cloud account. Then design, configure, develop, test and deploy that new digital assistant. Review the analytics on how your ODA is being used and optimize it, which is critical and key. And then finally repeat. You've just completed your hello world and your journey has now begun with many paths to go. The amount of time it takes from start to finish is it really is heavily dependent on your resource allotment and skill sets. We had a small internal team uh, working on our proof of concepts part time. And once we finished that first use case, the others were uh, the other development was much faster. And again, if you need any assistance or information, 
please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, my contact details are at the end of the presentation. And with that, do we have any questions? We're actually quite a bit ahead of schedule. Great, thank you all. And just a reminder to everyone, if you do have questions, go ahead and drop those in the question drop down box on your GoToWebinar panel. And we have had one question come in so far. Someone asks, is the digital assistant chatbots only available in the cloud? Um, and does that mean the, the ODA configuration? So if we were to take that question there, the ODA config or the, the Oracle digital assistant cloud is, is sort of that central um, brain on where all of our configuration and all of the requests from all of the, um, the different endpoints or channels are, are, are reaching out to. So, so if we take our, our, our assistant or our chat bot that's deployed in PeopleSoft, for instance, what that is is it's essentially a Java application that's built into PeopleSoft. And PeopleSoft loads, your homepage comes up, it makes a call out to some Java, um, and it, it initiates this request and this conversation back to the brain, which is the ODA cloud, on what do I say? What do, how do I speak to this person? They just asked me a question. What do, how, how do I respond? It's essentially the just the front end, which is relaying the information back from that cloud. So you do need um, ODA for that, that brain, for the digital assistant, for the config, um, how the flows work, et cetera. And you would need the, where, where are you going to be deploying it? Are you gonna deploy it in PeopleSoft? Are you going to deploy it in maybe your public website, which is on ABC, different technology? It really doesn't matter. Maybe it's on your mobile device where you've got, um, you've got a company application or a university has like a, an assistant or an app for their students. It could be interacting with that as that as that viewport essentially for the for that conversation. So yes, you you would need the cloud ODA to handle all of that interaction. Great, thank you. And the next question is, how did you learn to use ODA? Is there documentation on how to carry out the process that you just described? Yes, there is a lot of documentation. Um, the, the one slide I referenced during the config and actually, no, it was, I think it was during our lessons learned. Um, it has a link up to the, the docs.oracle.com specifically to the digital assistant site. It, that, that website is where, um, between that and probably the forums is, is where we, we picked up most of our information. It gives you very basic items. Um, but it's it it has a lot of in-depth breakdown, so you can drill deeper and deeper into a conversation. Um, as you start working, you'll you'll probably start off with very simplistic conversation flows that asks for something, takes the response, um, computes what to do next. But later, you'll be doing uh, system switching and and much much more robust items, which are all considered um, system delivered. Um, components which are all documented inside of that online documentation. Um, let's see, between, yeah, probably that those two, those two sites were what we used primarily for our, our quick, our quick getting up. And then it was a lot of trial and error and troubleshooting. But once right. you build that foundation, it's, um, it's very easy, or it's much more simplistic to start rolling these things out. All right, great. And the next question is, will the end user experience with digital assistants be the same regardless of the browser that they're using? So depending on the, the style sheets, um, depending on the, the Java that's being deployed in whatever application it might be, it should be similar. Um, there, there will be some styles that are that are browser specific where it'll it'll have a certain look and feel but the the overarching it should be fairly consistent regardless of browser as long as it's a supported browser all right and then we had another question for campus solutions what version is required and a couple of people also asked what people tools version is required for oda so for oda i believe it is 85707 in PeopleSoft, PeopleTools. 
Uh, for Campus Solutions, I believe it is PUN15, which is the one that just came out at the end of October uh, for that functionality. It was earlier on the HCM side. And I believe that was um, their the release 31. All right, and then another question. I understand that Digital Assistant is built with Java. Is PeopleSoft chatbot framework built with people tools or any other tool? It's built with both. So there, um, when we're building the APIs, it's still using a, a lot of the integration broker uh, creating a document, the, um, they call it, there's a new service application service framework is what it's uh, being termed. And there's more detail on that if you use that one link that was referenced in the slides to go to the, the PeopleSoft specific page, you can read up more on it there. The, the bot itself is going to be that, that Java based um, bot that gets instantiated. Yes, All thanks right. Nancy. Perfect. And that is all of the questions that we had come in. So thank you all so much again, from Sierra Cedar, for speaking with us today and being one of our PeopleSoft Day sponsors. And thank you all again for joining us for this session. Um, you all will receive a survey about Quest Experience Week after this session, so please fill that out for us and check out the Quest website for more sessions throughout the week. So thank you all again so much. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.